Sonic, the heart of your system. What's up guys, welcome back to another GGF video. And yes, today I'll be taking a look at the Lux 2 from Fantex. Now this case has a heap of features which I'll cover throughout this video. And I'll also extensively go over all the water cooling and radiator options this chassis has to offer. Now this video is quite long, so grab a drink, grab some food, sit back and let's get started. Finally, the Lux 2 has arrived and you should be able to get your hands on one very soon. It's as if the Elite, Primo and Original Lux had a meeting to discuss a merger and out came the Lux 2, a modern take on a mixture of previous Fantex chassis. Originally showcased at CES at the start of the year, Fantex have done quite a few design changes and I'll touch base on them throughout this video. The Lux 2 is an elegant full-size tower with more features than most users will ever need. Dual system support, 11 SSDs or 12 hard drive spots, dual power supply support, and extensive water cooling options really shows Fantex are in full flex. And doing all this with a recommended retail price of 190 US dollars is quite impressive. The Lux 2 is no means a small chassis, but definitely not their largest and comes in at 240 wide, 570 high, and 595 deep, and weighs a good 15 kilograms. Case materials include powder coated steel for the main chassis, aluminum for all external panels, and a four millimeter thick removable hinged tempered glass side panel with a medium tint can be found. Two color options are available in either satin black or anthracite gray, with our model being the later. If you've been following this chassis from its beginning, you may have noticed the exterior looks slightly different. This is because Fantex have ditched the high airflow fabric they originally introduced. This wrapped around the front and the top, and after seeing this in person, I'm glad they decided to leave it off. I do like the concept, but I just don't think it's ready yet. Fantex have been marketing the Lux 2 for many different uses, which include dual system setup for a two-in-one gaming and streaming PC, workstation server setup where storage is vital, and lastly, a beastie high-end water-cooled gaming PC, which leads us to the direction of our build. As I've never done a dual system build before in a Fantex case, I thought now is a good time to test it out, as Fantex are now including the iTex bracket for system number two, as previously it was always an optional extra. All you need to complete a dual system config in the Lux 2 is to purchase the Fantex 90 degree PCIe riser cable. Moving inside the chassis, motherboard support is up to SSI, EEB, EATX, all the way down to mini ITX, and for the secondary motherboard location, only MITX is supported. Cable grommets can be found along the 24 pin side and also down in the secondary motherboard location for that ITX system. If you're using a PSU in this location instead, this grommet will feed your cables to the back of the chassis. Speaking of power supplies, the Lux 2 can take two just like on some of their previous cases. The main unit is housed out of sight at the back while a second unit shares the same spot as the secondary motherboard. Just to note that if you wish to run two systems in the Lux 2, you can only install one power supply, which will need to have dual system support, just like the Fantex Revolt X line. Fantex include two cover plates to this area for either setup. Horizontal and vertical GPU mounts are installed by default, but be careful if using the vertical mount as being out in the middle of nowhere, your GPU has no bus support and can flop around if your case is being transported. For the second motherboard spot, only a vertical mount GPU is supported and both vertical GPU locations have three slots while the main horizontal GPU location has eight. Graphics card length is up to 503 millimeters long and yes, they did list it in the spec sheet. Even with the thick side radiator installed, you still have 345 millimeters of GPU clearance. Moving on to storage support and this is where things get crazy. As I mentioned earlier, the Lux 2 can hold 11 SSDs or 12 hard drives. Just note that this is not all at once as the SSDs and hard drives share the same locations. By default, the chassis comes with four stackable three and a half inch hard drive trays with each taking one drive. These can be mounted against the motherboard tray at the front or stacked together and installed in the secondary PSU location. Note that if installing drives in this spot, you cannot run a dual system config. Extra drive trays can be purchased separately. Three two and a half inch SSDs can be installed behind the motherboard tray with a sweet little window to show off your drives. RGB anyone? I'd say this would be your primary 2.5 inch SSD location. Eight more SSDs can be installed 
on the plastic cover panels that go on the motherboard tray at the front, four on the front side and four on the back side. If installing hard drives, these plastic covers need to be removed. Now let's move on to cooling and there's plenty of it as well. I'll just cover radiator locations rather than single fan mounts. The Lux 2 has four main radiator spots which include the bottom, front, side and top. But please note that you cannot populate all these areas at once. Starting at the bottom, Fantex have included a radiator bracket which is a nice addition supporting 360, 240 or 120mm radiators. Take note that this and the top radiator spots do not support 140mm variant radiators. This bracket is toolless with a thumb screw to lock it in place. Radiator thickness here is basically unlimited as well you can see for yourself. If you do go with a radiator down here, you will still have the ability to mount the second system's motherboard, it will just need to be a shorter radiator. The front and side radiator locations both support up to 480mm or 420mm radiators, but you won't be able to install them both at once. Clearance is just too tight and it will go through some clearance numbers soon. The top of the chassis can hold up to a 360mm radiator, while the back can hold up to a 140mm radiator. Now for those clearance numbers, and if you're looking to jam this case with radiators, listen carefully. Bear in mind these numbers are based off installing the largest possible radiators in their locations. Smaller radiators will have much better support. With a 360mm radiator installed at the bottom, pushed all the way to the back and ports at the back, the clearance for the front radiator and fans is 78mm, if going with the 480 radiator at the front. For the side, the clearance is 60mm before hitting the bottom radiator. Also note that the max radiator width of 125mm can fit at the bottom. My Bixky radiator was a very tight squeeze. With the front mounted 480 radiator, the max clearance for the side location is 27mm. And just to note you can install fans in the back section of the chassis as well as in the main section. With a 480mm side radiator installed, the max clearance at the front is 30mm. With a 480 side radiator installed, top radiator support is cut down dramatically to a 240mm rad only. With the top 360mm radiator installed, push to the back and ports at the back, front radiator and fan clearance is up to 77mm. Motherboard clearance for the top radiator location is good and your radiator will run down past your memory modules. I used G-Skills Trident Z and had no issues. On the other hand, if you have higher memory, like Team Group's Nighthawk, it will fail on the radiator. RAM clearance is roughly 55mm. Fantech state the top of the chassis can hold up to three 140mm fans, but no support for 140mm radiators. I would say this is most likely be due to any 140 size radiators will fail on the memory modules and not going past them. Installing a 140mm size radiator is really going to limit its thickness. Case ventilation I feel is good with this stealthy intake at the front. From front on, intake looks minimal, but from a side view, the intake gaps are quite hefty. Other intake options can either be from the bottom, with 23mm of clearance to the ground, or the large ventilated side area, which can be used for intake or exhaust. Bottom, front, side and top radiator locations all come pre-installed with removable dust filters. I know some people don't like dust filters, as they do restrict airflow, but at least being included, you can take them out if you wish. Fantex have also included their anti-sag bracket. This isn't the first time we've used this device and find it works quite well. By slightly pushing down at the front of the GPU, raises the back to reduce sag. Front IO is hidden under a pop-out cover where we find four USB, a Type-C connector, audio jacks and two RGB control buttons. Next to these, you'll find the reset button with a hard drive LED ring around it. You won't find dual power buttons on the Lux 2 and if you go down a dual system route, you simply use the reset button as the secondary power button. The primary power button is located on the top of the chassis. And yes, the Lux 2 has digital 5V RGB built in. A long strip runs along the front right of the chassis up over the top. You'll also find the same RGB running over the primary PSU shroud. Both lots of RGB can be controlled by the case's control or offloaded to your motherboard's 3-pin RGB header for hardware syncing. Now you didn't think I was going to end the video without showing you the crazy build I did in the Lux 2, so let's go in and check it out.
Now, what a crazy build this was. Now, I just wanna go over my build notes while I was building this system, just to go over a few things I found. So it has the negatives and positives. Now, this chassis comes with no fans, completely zero fans are included. Now, I think that is fine. This is an enthusiast chassis. Uh, enthusiasts will normally have their preference in fans, probably RGB fans, something like I've done in this build here. There's no point Fantex putting in uh, three, four or five, 140 mil of their good fans, charging an extra 50 bucks on the chassis. Uh, rear cable management is kept pretty basic. Uh, there's only one little cover that just goes over to the end of the power supply, which I think is fine. Uh, they're not adding all these extra compartments and so on, because personally, I think they sort of bulk out the back of your, uh, of your system, and you really have to use those cable trays when they're included. Uh, Fandex has kept it simple with this cover, and then just two runs of uh, Velcro ties going down the middle. Uh, another area, there are a heap of cables when running two systems. Now, I can't stress enough, if you are doing a system like this, uh, definitely go for power supply uh, replacement cables. I did a mixture of both. I had some extensions, some replacements. I kind of messed up on the cables I was going to use. So I had to use, yeah, some extensions, some replacement cables, and there are so many cables out the back. I actually had to remove this cover because this does take up a little bit of room because it is sort of angled, but yeah, I had to remove this and just jam all the cables in there. I'll show you a photo. It's not pretty but um, I managed to get the back closed, but I don't think too many people are going to be running dual systems water-cooled uh, with all these fans and so on. But yeah, if you are, try and get the right length of, uh, of power supply cables, because I think one of my length, the 24 pin, was an extension that was this long, and then you've all already got the length of the stock power supply cable. So I think the 24 pin was about this long. I had to try and uh, route in the back. Now, uh, there are no fancy radiator brackets except for the bottom. Uh, you don't have like these slide out ones at the top, slide out ones at the front, just a removable one at the bottom. And I think that's fine. Uh, this is all to do with Fantex trying to keep the cost down. Uh, the same as with the fan, no fans as well. Cause just remember, this is cheaper than the Evolve X. So when you think about it, the amount of features you get in this one, it's larger, you can fit 480 radiators, the Evolve X can't. Um, and you've got the dual system support by default, but with the Evolve X, you do need to purchase the extra ITX motherboard tray. Now, you can't install the front hard drives along the front if you have a radiator. I didn't uh, mention that earlier in the video, but if I have, like, say, the radiator at the front like I've done, you cannot install any hard drives in those trays because it just sticks out, that radiator sticks out too far. So what you'd do is you'd use this cage if you're going with a single system with the radiator at the front, this tray of drives would go down in this area where the ITX motherboard is. But if you are doing a dual system exactly like this, water cooled like this, there is no option to fit any three and a half inch mechanical hard drives. You'll have to go all SSDs, which like I have done. So that's just something to keep in mind. But I think the number or the percentage of people that's gonna go a full custom water cooled system like this with uh, two motherboards, um, it's probably gonna be a very, very niche uh, group of, uh, of people. Now, in saying all that, I don't think sort of all those areas where fantasy are cost cutting are really gonna affect the overall, um, the overall enjoyment of this case and how it sort of runs. I did notice that once all the panels are off, it is a little bit, uh, it is a little bit weak. It does flex a little bit, but hey, you're only gonna have it off once it's, uh, once you're building it. Once it's on, like I've got the top, the front and the back on now and it is solid as a rock. Now, once again, Fantex are throwing in a universal uh, fan hub. It's only got three three pin and five four pin uh, fan headers on it. That's probably not enough because I've technically got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then if you were going to go with the rear fan, that's nine and you're probably gonna want all four pin. But um, it is in a good spot. I can't stand it when case manufacturers put their fan hub controller smack bam right in the center behind the motherboards. You need to run all your cables into one sort of direct spot. Fandex has up the top here sort of, uh, sort of under that top lip, which is good. Um, I did sort of mess up when I was talking about the radiator uh, clearance numbers and all that. You can install a 480 millimeter radiator on the side up to 45 millimeters thick uh, if you do have a top one. I did show a photo where the ports uh, do come out where the top radiator is at the top. But if you flip that radiator upside down, you can have the ports at the bottom on the side. You can put the fans in the rear compartment and then you can have a radiator along the top it can come down past that uh, down past that radiator and you just have to run the in and the out at the bottom of the ports. Now I had an issue with my uh, pass through. Uh, there are two uh, bulkhead pour sort of holes in this chassis. There's one down the bottom here. You can see this tube. I've got that set up as a drain port. I had no issues fitting my pass throughs in. I tried, I tried the Bits Power and Bisky. They went in fine. 
the top one up the top, which is meant to come down for a fill port. My uh, Bits Power uh, pass-through was very tight. It actually screwed in. It's te technically not meant to screw into the hole, uh, but my Bisky just would not go through the hole at all. Um, I've fed that back to the fan test guys. That's probably might just be something to do with my chassis. The powder coating might be a little bit thick, um, a little bit thick up there. So, um, so yeah, just keep in mind with that. Um, now, some other things I really did like with this, uh, it's really well priced. As I said, 190 US dollars, it is cheaper. Well, not really, really well priced. It's not the cheapest case on the market, but for what you're getting, I think it is uh, competitively priced. Uh, they've got good materials all around. You wouldn't know that um, this is any different than any other high quality fan test case, and it is slightly cheaper. There's plenty of features, as I said, pretty much uh, I think there will be enough for uh, most users out there. This is the first time I've done a dual system uh, dual system build and um, yes it was quite um, quite interesting I didn't really help myself out by using the um, if you're wondering what this back distro uh, plate is this is the Glacier D140 you saw this at um, saw this at uh, Computex I think it's like 99 bucks or something what you do is you just goes in a standard 140 millimeter uh, rear fan mount now you don't have to use it on this case it'll fit any chassis that'll fit a 140 millimeter uh, fan hole at the back and then you simply just run like your CPU and your GPU in and in and out of it you pretty much feed uh, one line in from a pump wherever it is and then you feed um, you feed one line out so I probably wouldn't use this as a res only I've, I've got a res as well because there's no way you're going to be able to have sort of fill this up um, as a single res so I've got this uh, the, the res there which I filled up at the front and then I just fed everything back here but an issue I had, uh, nothing to do with this case, more to do with, um, solely to do with this uh, distro plate, is when you have a big GPU, as this sticks out a little bit, it's like two or so centimeters thick, it actually covers up your GPU slot, uh, sort of your GPU holes to screw in your GPU. So there's pretty much no way to screw in large, uh, large video cards. I just could not get my fingers in there. I actually, I'm using the EVGA RTX cards. They're quite beefy, the hydro coppers. I actually had to use pre-install the first thumb screw for each video card, the one where it's not the solid hole, you can still slide the video card up, and then I managed to just get my two fingers in and tighten it up. So just a note with that, anyone picking that up, it is a bit of a mission, because I couldn't put the cards in and then put this in later, because you can't get it in. So I had to definitely have the distro plate in first and then put the cards in. Um, another thing, there is also foam all along the side, so that'll stop any uh, rattles, that'll make it a nice, uh, a nice airtight chassis for um, positive airflow and so on. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, that's pretty much it. I might just talk about this build. I do have a time-lapse uh, coming. That's actually already done because I need to do the time-lapse video before I do all this, so I need to have the system done. So I will probably post that up probably two or three days after this video. So if you want to know all the ins and outs of all the hardware I use, make sure you watch that time-lapse video because you'll see down here, yes, there is an ITX board there, the ASRock X570 ITX TB3. Uh, that's the uh, crazy one with the AMD board with the Intel mounting. It actually turned out good because I could have both of the uh, CPU blocks exactly the same because this is your X299 EVGA and then I could use the uh, Intel mounting on the AMD board so both CPU blocks are the same. But yeah, very tight down there. It was a bit tight going with all of this uh, brass and copper tubing. Um, but yeah, quite a fun little build to do. And as I said, just keep in mind with all the cables you have. Um, I'm actually glad that Fantex have have gone the route where they made it a little bit tighter at the back for a dual system uh, use. For one system, it'll be 100% fine, plenty of room, but for two, it is tight, and I'm glad they didn't make it so you had plenty of room for two systems, and then for one system, you would have even so much more room. So I've sort of favored more towards the single use, because once again, I don't think everyone is going to be running uh, dual systems in this chassis. But anyway, I want to thank Fantex for uh, sending me this uh, case to check out and uh, do this crazy build in it and to uh, do the review and time this video. I hope you enjoyed uh, the build I did and this video and stay tuned for more videos in the future.